Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamer I Gamer. So in the previous video, I believe uh, we talked about uh, the moment of inertia tensor and uh, a little more in depth about the diagonalization of tensors. In this video, let's talk about uh, what handedness means, what the right hand rule is and why is there a right hand rule in the first place and where it stems from basically pseudo objects. So let's get started. So let's say we have vector A, which is say A naught E1, you know, say it's in the E1 direction with magnitude A naught vector b with magnitude b naught in the direction of e2 and a crossed with b is actually equal to we can just uh, use Kramer's rule here and get the value for this using the determinant of this matrix which gives me a naught b naught e3 uh, let me sketch the coordinate system quickly so so this is e1 hat e3 hat and e2 hat notice the 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 way i've oriented these axes so it's sort of like E3 is uh, e, uh, is in the direction of E1 cross E2. So E1, E2, E3, they follow this sort of a right hand rule. And, and you can see this clearly if you expand this out using your subscript summation. So say AI, BJ, E sub K hat, Levi Chivita IJK, which in this case is just A naught B naught E3, which stems from the idea that E1 hat dot E2 hat is E3 hat. And again, you can say this is just because of the, the convention in which we defined our Levi Chivita function. So it was something like this. If you go in the the direction indicated by these arrows you attach a po positive sign but if you go in the other direction so say from 3 to 2, 2 to 1 from 1 to 3 you got a negative sign there okay uh, you might not see how this can be a problem at least here uh, you might just say this is just convention you know right hand majority of the people scientists in the world were right-handed so they just have a right hand rule for their more dominant hand but um why is it there even a need to define a convention fine i get it i mean you know e3 could be in the negative direction but it is going to impact the cross product and you may not see this clearly here i'm going to show you a solid example to just prove this point so let's define a new coordinate system let's say the the primed coordinate system in the way that x prime is uh, say negative x1 x1 prime is negative x1 x2 prime is x2 x3 prime is x3 so i'm changing nothing else other than uh, the, uh x1 coordinate i'm just attaching a negative for the new x1 prime so the, the transformation matrix is just going to be negative one zero 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 one zero 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 one so you see almost identity if not for this negative one here this is the matrix that converts uh, helps us convert from um uh, basically the cartesian or the unprimed to the prime coordinates and i believe it's also the case vice versa just for this uh, simple coordinate system Okay, so this means that 
vector a which is invariant is just going to be negative a naught e1 prime in the in the new coordinate system b again invariant is going to be b naught e2 prime because x2 prime is equal to x2 okay so we can define say you know we can we have, have we, we have these relations because a1 prime a2 prime a3 prime the components of a in the prime system are related to the components in the unprime system by the same matrix and that's it, precisely how we got this relation if we use this matrix as a transformation map in in this case uh, a2 and a3 are 0 and we have a1 is equal to a0 because because a is just a0 e1 we can do the same with say b so b1 prime b2 prime b3 prime and that's equal to negative 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 and we have basically let me just write it directly 0 b naught 0 just directly write what this is negative a naught 0 0 by matrix multiplication here it's invariant 0 b naught 0 I mean all these transformations are all all good uh, let me just uh, try to find the cross product of a and b in this new primed coordinate system so say e1 prime e2 prime e3 prime and you have these uh, vector components in the new coordinate system so negative a0 0 0 0 b0 0 this should give us the cross product in the new system and look what we get negative a naught b naught e3 prime so a crossed with b is just ai prime bj prime epsilon ijk because both of them are still going to be orthonormal that's why the levi civita works the same way e sub k prime which I just wrote down as negative a naught b naught e3 prime and if you notice like the connection between say x3 prime and x3 they're just directly connected they're the same so e3 prime is just going to be e3 so we have negative a naught b naught e3 um, what you can also do is you can if you wanna don't wanna you know use this uh, relation in, in golden you can write a transformation matrix to change the primed basis vector to the unprimed basis vector so I'm just gonna have say zero zero uh, a naught b naught let me quickly correct myself here uh, I'm not changing the, ba the, the basis vector from a prime to an unprime I'm just using this matrix because I want to change the, this cross product this vector cross product that we got and write out its uh, new components in the prime system because this cross product we got was for the unprime system these components at least a naught b naught were for the unprime system I'm just changing those components into a prime system because we want to write a cross product in the new system and this turns out to be 0 a naught b naught so I mean this was a cross b anyways and in the new system this transformation law is telling me we should get a naught b naught e3 prime but there is a, a clear contradiction between those two 
because there's a negative here there's no negative here so what is really happening um it's a little weird but uh, if you notice this negative e3 it's sort of like the direction got flipped so instead of using the right hand rule we're sort of using the left hand rule where the convention of the levi civita function levi civita symbol is switched so instead of having a negative we now have a positive for this opposite direction so this is sort of like the left hand rule going on just because of our choice of x where we inverted x1 prime so what's really going on how do we solve this sort of paradox of no negative here and a negative there because clearly a vector is invariant so one of them has to be the right answer so to clearly strike out this uh, discrepancy between this negative and, uh, and a positive here we define quantities which are in this case called pseudo vectors but pseudo objects in 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 general and I'll, I'll generalize further after i'm done with vectors so what actually changes this transformation law because in the, the in here what we were doing is matrix a say components of like the cross product in sort of the unprimed system to give give you the same but in like the the prime system right we were using this transformation law this is the matrix a so regular re vectors transform by the law I, I i used incorrectly over here by say vr prime is equal to vi ari so say components of v in the prime system are equal to components of v the unprime system but first you like sort of pre multiply with this transformation matrix between those two systems this is for regular vectors and it, it won't apply here for pseudo vectors we use this transformation law so say v tilde sub r prime is So the component of pseudo vector in the prime system we have determinant of the trans of this transformation matrix the transformation matrix and then the pseudo vector in the unprime system and if we use this because if cross products are going to be pseudo vectors the thing is if you use the 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 rule for regular vectors on pseudo vectors you get these paradoxes like we just got so that's when you know it's a, it's going to be a pseudo vector but usually cross products are pseudo vectors so a cross b sub 1 prime a cross b sub 2 prime a cross b sub 3 prime is equal to negative transformation matrix negative 100010001 a not b not and then we get the right negative sign that we shouldn't have gotten over here okay so a cross b is precisely a not b not e sub 3 prime 
Now to geometrically see a picture of this is, um, let me see how I can do it. So, so x1 prime is sort of backward, not in the regular x direction. Everything else is like pretty much the same. This is x3 prime. That is x2 prime. So originally, we had our cross product in the e3 direction. So, so I don't know, somewhere like this. Well, it's going to be in the same direction. But the way you get to it in the new system is going to be different because now you're going to have to cross things. So, so assuming, assuming, uh, assuming you use the right hand rule on, on this, uh, you'll have X one prime crossed with X two prime, which will be in the negative x3 prime direction but you if you use like the left hand rule for example it's it's going to be on top in the in the in the direction we would expect it to be so the way i see it is you know sort of the the direction of the cross product is is pretty much subjective because it changed again and again you use the left hand rule you get the same direction as that of the cartesian use the use the right hand rule and you get the negative since we defined the cartesian direction to be positive for the the cross product a negative only says that a right hand rule would would give you basically a, a flipped image of it so so I, I would just say that the direction of the cross product or a pseudo vector is coordinate specific but we can look at the sign and see whether which rules we're going to use to to get the to, to get basically the same direction as we did in the Cartesian case. If it is a negative, then we're going to change from right hand to a left hand rule. If, if it's a positive, then right hand rule works. Hooray. So let me just write a few things down here now. So, uh, if the handedness of the two systems, two coordinate systems, the original and the one you transform into is the same. You're going to get the determinant of the transformation matrix equal to positive one. So which means that uh, pseudo vectors and regular vectors transform identically. So you can't really differentiate between what a vector is and what a pseudo vector is. But you can only differentiate between a pseudo vector by giving uh, examples or, co or choosing coordinate systems like the one I, one I chose for this uh, specific example. So if opposite handedness, this is again all because of convention. Then we're going to get the determinant of the transformation matrix is negative one. So pseudo vectors
will transform with an additional negative sign to just combat for the sign parity going on there like you know this direction parity the right hand the left hand uh, uh, chirality that's going on probably a better word chirality okay so this was all about pseudo vectors and regular vectors and how they transform a cross product is probably the best example of vector I can give you in physics another example of a pseudo vector and this is this is a, this is infamous on Wikipedia especially is torque because it's a cross product of the position vector and the force acting at the point of contact so most of the times what, what we care about is basically the magnitude of the torque but you know if if we are you know defining some form of rotation where it, where rotation initiates or if you want to add torques up you just have to like remember this transformation property you might ask me what is the determinant uh, of a is like not equal to one i mean that's uh, a trivial case to handle because the thing is a is an orthogonal matrix which means that a inverse is equal to a transpose take the determinant on both sides so determinant of a inverse is equal to determinant of a transpose uh, there's a property of determinants that says that determinant of inverse of a matrix is just a reciprocal of the determinant of the matrix the de determinant of the inverse is the reciprocal of the determinant of the regular matrix so 1 over determinant of a is equal to the determinant of a transpose is equal to the de determinant of the matrix itself so the de determinant is invariant under um, transposition so we just gonna have determinant of a so we have determinant of a whole thing squared is 1 which means that the determinant of a is plus or minus 1 so and this ho again holds true for orthonormal systems for which the matrices are orthogonal for non-orthogonal systems those are non-trivial cases which I won't be covering in this video series at least so this is a really good example you can also think about say angular momentum again position vector crossed with the linear momentum okay so let's talk about uh, scalars you guessed it there are pseudo scalars too I just club them with pseudo tensors because hey scalars are rank 0 tensors so assuming you have a scalar in another system it sounds silly think about because scalars are the most invariant things ever and say that transforms by this property well objects that transform by this property are called uh, pseudo scalars for regular scalars you don't need it so it's invariant you don't even need a transformation matrix because uh, hey it's a scalar um, the best example I would like to give you of something like that is the volume of a parallel piped I, I, I can't spell it I'm sorry so a cross b dot c so this is a, a scalar triple product the way you visualize this is a vector here you have your b vector there this is c vector somewhere like that and uh, basically the the volume the parallel piped this thing traces out so if you sort of ex ex extend this outwards or backwards uh, let's see I'm just doing a horrible job with sketching I, I, I hope you you see the the picture 
something like that so the volume of this guy this entire dotted region is what is given by this uh, scalar triple product we talked of scalar triple products in one of my videos where i derived a nice property of them that as long as you you shuffle vectors in a cyclical manner you basically get the same uh scalar triple product formulation as before so they act as some form of uh, uh major levi civita symbol unit okay as well in a right handed system um a cross b the way i've drawn them will be upwards and it will be in the direction of basically c if not opposite it because it never will be opposite it will be in the basically the the plane that contains c so a cross b dot c is always going to be positive because it's not opposite c but in the left handed system we have the situation reversed because now a cross b now points downwards the way i've drawn it and uh scalar triple product is going to be negative it's a scalar so i can just set an inequality with zero this is a uh, probably the best example for a pseudo scalar i can give you you might run across some of them maybe i don't know somewhere uh it's it really does it depends uh okay so the last way i'm going to generalize this notion of pseudo objects is by talking of pseudo tensors so assuming you have a tensor in a prime system t prime sub rst is equal to i'm just writing the the transformation property for each of these guys determinant of uh, basically tensor component in the unprime system i forgot to have more dots and then all the transformation matrix this is basically the transformation law for tensors i covered it in probably in the last video so check that out so assume that the the prime is like a left handed system so we have say ai p j epsilon sub k uh, e sub k epsilon i j k is equal to negative ar prime b s prime sub k prime epsilon prime r s t i'm just showing i'm just using this and i've written a prime because i'm treating the levi civita symbol as a tensor because this is the probably the best way of demonstrating how pseudo tensors work this proper this transformation properties for pseudo tensors regular tensors uh don't need this determinant okay uh let's let's move on with this this may sound a little silly because i said uh, levi civita you know it holds the convention we should respect and it's sort of invariant under bases but i'm going to just use a different perspective out here i'm just using transformation properties for these vector components so i'll have ri for ai uh sj for bj and tk for e sub k epsilon prime rst so i i just have epsilon i j k is equal to ne negative a sub r i a sub s j a sub t k epsilon prime r s t 
and this negative you can think of that as the determinant of the transformation matrix because prime is a left handed coordinate system we got a negative from the determinant so this this implies that epsilon sub i j k is actually determinant of the transformation matrix a sub r i a sub s j a sub t k epsilon prime r s t and this looks like basically the transformation property of a pseudo tensor so we can conclude this clever fact that the levi civita symbol is a pseudo tensor so now you can think of the levi civita symbol not as just some weird sign uh sign uh, notation contraction fancy stuff but as a tensor more precisely after this video as a pseudo tensor uh, you can try to check what the kronecker delta turns out to be i'm pretty certain it, it would be uh, a regular uh, ten a rank two tensor. This is this in this case is a rank three tensor because there are three indices. I w I didn't cover the metric tensor. Otherwise, you know, we could have had fun with that too. So so check for this. This is my exercise to you viewers. So I think that's it for this video because I don't really have anything left to talk about. We covered uh, everything that was important and also everything that was important in the basics of tensors in the next video i'm going to start a new topic so please stay tuned for that please like share and subscribe to my channel guys recommend me to your friends stay tuned for more content i will be back again believe me i'm on vacation and i am productive as ever so stay tuned peace out